I know now why you cry, but it's something I can never do. We all have those games in our collections that we forget about for one reason or another. When revisiting some of these forgotten titles, we can easily be reminded of why they are forgotten. Difficulty being the major problem or they are just not as good as we remember causing major frustration. Sometimes they can even break us, wondering why we even purchased them in the first place. In this video, I'm going to confess and mention five games in my video game collection that, well, I just cannot beat. Let's get into the list. I love trauma movies, especially The Toxic Avenger. In 1991, we got a cartoon loosely based off The Toxic Avenger called Toxic Crusaders. The Toxic Crusaders cartoon was short-lived but introduced some awesome looking heroes and villains. Personally, I just loved how all the characters looked. They all looked so gruesome. Toxic Crusaders rule! One thing I had no idea about with the Toxic Crusaders is they made a few video games. There are three in total for three different consoles. There's one for the NES, the Game Boy, and the Sega Mega Drive. Toxic Crusaders for the Sega Mega Drive is a beat em up game, and the one I own, and the one that I'm struggling with, big time. For starters, it's cool that a trauma game even exists, and there are some things that are really cool about this game. Such as, you can clean up the streets with either Toxic, Ozone, and Junkyard. Fortunately for me, I can't even come close to beating this game with either character. I've tried over and over, I've even put the settings on easy, and it still doesn't help me out. There are 6 levels in Toxic Crusaders for the Sega Mega Drive. The furthest I can make it is the 4th level, titled Across the Water. There is so much jumping involved with this level, which you need to be really precise with, which is my downfall. The game is pretty generous though, you can gain extra lives and power-ups, but you can lose them as fast as you can gain them. It's kind of brutal. As frustrating as Toxic Crusaders is, it's still an enjoyable game. It's just very challenging, and i give anything to be able to beat this game, as I've owned it for 3 years now. I like to check out the other two Toxic Crusader games, but that ain't happening until I beat this game cause I'm not having two Toxic Crusader games that I potentially cannot finish. Why that's doggone unfair! Paranoia for the PC Engine is a pretty weird title. It was released for the PC Engine and Turbo Graphics in 1990. The cover for the PC Engine version looks pretty cool, showing off some awesome artwork that could even pass for a heavy metal album, but this game plays more like a psychedelic nightmare. Paranoia is a side-scrolling shooting game. You control a spaceship and you can pick up some really unique power-ups. Sounds simple enough so far, but this game is so far out there. I like how the game starts off looking nice and bright with what looks like the ocean in the background. Later on, it looks like the ocean is melting. The enemies and boss battles in Paranoia are pretty tripped out, and even when you finish a level, an alien flips you off. Did, did you say? Very cheeky. Paranoia is a short game consisting of four levels. My biggest flaw with this game is I'm so amazed and distracted with all that's going on with the levels. The levels are so tripped out, and the enemies are even weirder. Honestly, I can't even tell what half of the enemies are in Paranoia. This guy, I think he looks like a spiky seashell. And the rest of the enemies, I couldn't give you an answer of what they might be. Listen to how weird the noise is when you shoot some of these enemies. Let's talk about the bosses in Paranoia. We have a flying eye with horns. That's easy enough to figure out, but this next boss is something different. We have what looks like a skull with two tongues hanging out, sliding up and down a wall. You have to dodge knives and flying balls that rebound off a wall. See what I mean about the distraction? I've owned this game for 4 years now, and the furthest I can make it is the third level. 
the wolf that shoots spikes out of its tail ends my run. I'm just going to guess, but I think my guess could be pretty close. This game is based off someone's personal acid trip, and that's why the game is called Paranoia. As weird as Paranoia looks and plays, it's a fun game. You get three continues, an alien flips you off, there are some pretty interesting power-ups, and you travel through some Salvador Dali looking levels with some tripped out looking enemies. Hopefully one day I can get over the weirdness in this game and finish it, and hopefully I can discover why this guy is so cheeky. Released in 1989, Castlevania Adventure is a black and white side-scrolling platformer game for the Game Boy. I'm going to give you a confession, I haven't really played any Castlevania games except for Castlevania 4. Up to now, Castlevania Adventure is the only Castlevania game I've played since the 90s. If I had to sum up in one word how I feel about Castlevania Adventure, it's gotta be exhausting. It's so easy to die over and over in this game, with all the obstacles and enemies waiting to dish out some pain. As an added bonus, your character feels like he's walking underwater. Your character will even get knocked back when you get hit. And when you jump in this game, it feels as though your character is wearing so much armor. There are four levels in total for Castlevania or Adventure. As you progress through the levels, they get harder with the difficulty. The first level, I can breeze through. The second level can get a bit rough. The third level is a nail biter. And the fourth level, good night. I'm struggling in this part of the fourth level. This game requires so much practice to get good at course. For the most part of this game, it's trial and error. You learn from your mistakes. Good journey. Good journey. Good journey. The weapon power-ups can really help you clear a stage, but once you get hit, you lose the power-up and you gotta go back to using your plastic whip. Well, it feels plastic. I've owned Castlevania Adventure for about a year and a half now, and I love to finish this game, as I've sat for hours trying to get through this level. Hopefully I can beat this game soon, cause I want to check out the other Castlevania titles. I think it's so overdue. Is there any surprise that a Star Wars game made it on this list? Released in 1987, Star Wars for the Famicom is a side-scrolling platform game. This Star Wars title is a bit different to the rest of the titles, as it was only released in Japan at the time. Some things are a little bit strange with this Famicom title. Wait, wait, is this guy wearing sunglasses? While some of the characters look recognizable from the first Star Wars movie, it's not until you encounter a boss fight between you and Darth Vader that you gotta question yourself on how much you really know about Star Wars. After one hit, Darth Vader turns into a scorpion, and in the next encounter, Darth Vader turns into a zombie pterodactyl. This is a bit weird, but I'll take it. I can't make it far in this game at all for a few reasons. The jumping for starters. It's so floaty. Sometimes it works in your favor, sometimes it's a cause of losing a life. And controlling your character feels so slippery when you're jumping from platform to platform. Most of the enemies die after one hit, and so do you. The funny thing is, I do enjoy a lot about this game though. The graphics look awesome. There is a shooting stage which is a lot of fun. And in one level, you travel to Egypt. Well, I think it's Egypt. As weird and out of place some things may seem in this Star Wars game for the Famicom, it's actually a fun game to play. It's very challenging, and I can imagine the further you progress, the more fun and weird this game will get. But this game takes a lot of practice, otherwise you'll have Darth Vader breathing down your neck during the game over screen. Did you hear something? Yes. Terminator 2 was one of those movies that blew me away with the visual effects and the storytelling. Today the movie is still as good as I remember it. After Terminator 2 was released in 1991, along came the movie merchandise. We got Terminator 2 toys which were pretty cool, and of course we got Terminator 2 video games. One for the Super Nintendo and the one I will be talking about. Terminator 2 for the Super Nintendo is an action-adventure game, and one of those games I remember hiring over and over back in the day. As much as I hired this game, I could not even work out how to beat the first stage really, 
and when I did, controlling the motorbike in the next segment was a nightmare. But I kept hiring the game cause Terminator 2 was awesome and I wanted to work out how to get far in this game. Flash forward to a month ago, I decided to pick up Terminator 2 for the Super Nintendo and see how far I can make it in the game. Let's just have a look at my purchase. $52, that's pretty steep. One photo. I think the cartridge will be in good shape for the price. Yeah, money well spent. It's so cool to finally own this game now. I can spend as much time as I want with the game without the pressure of returning it. During the first hour, I managed to get past the first stage easily. Controlling the motorbike during the next segment was a challenge, but I was getting the hang of it. Everything was going smooth until I got to this part in the game. After freeing Sarah Connor, you need to drive to a location. Where that location is, I have no idea. I ended up driving all over town, down every street, hoping I can find this hidden location. It wouldn't be so hard if you didn't have the police chasing you. After a few crashes with the police, your car can blow up, and it doesn't take long for that to happen. It's so frustrating as I feel as though I have driven everywhere to find this next location. I'd love to see more of this game, but uh, yeah. The game itself is pretty fun to play, and most of the characters in the game are recognizable from the Terminator 2 movie. The levels are quite short once you remember them, it's just the driving stages that are brutal due to the controls. There are a few things that stand out to me in this game for starters. The music in the game is decent. The weapon pickups are straight from the movie and do silence the T-1000 just for a little bit. The Terminator can jump for some reason, it looks so natural. You can even visit John Connor's house, and for some reason his house is booby trapped. Random bombs appear and even toys will attack you, uh, okay. One thing that I find strange is everything blows up in this game when you shoot it. Wardrobes to even couches can explode. Hell even you can blow up. Hopefully soon I can work out this part of the game as I would love to see what else is waiting for me in the other levels, but that requires a lot of practice. Actually, all the games I mentioned on this list require a lot of practice. Hopefully, you have enjoyed this video, and let me know, do you have the same problem with any of these titles on this list? Or can you easily breeze through the titles that I have mentioned? I gotta get back to it so I can try and beat these games and erase them off my list of games I cannot beat. Later dudes. <laughs> Just... Oh, God.